Okay, so I had a really, really amazing time with Lorenzo yesterday over over the campfire. And you know, I've, I've been searching for clarity about this YouTube channel, uh, just as I mentioned. You know, it's like, how can I distill this YouTube channel, I guess, myopically? How can I give it a sense of focus, right? Like when you go to... You go to Alex Ramosi's YouTube channel, you know, you can expect some some business advice and some sales advice and tax advice, just stuff related to business. And then you go to Gary V's um, page, you know, you can expect a lot of business and there's some life stuff in there. And he talks about strategy and social media. So you generally get like a good idea in terms of what you're going to get from a specific YouTube channel and I've been trying to figure out what is that for myself so I've just been documenting the the journey you know some of you have watched the previous videos uh, which thank you if, if you've been following on the journey following along the journey I'm, I'm glad that it could be whatever whatever it is uh, for you whether it's entertaining whether it's like <laughs> concerning <laughs> whether it's inspiring whether it's I don't know. I don't know what it is for you. So um, I'm glad that you are enjoying. And if this is your first time joining us in or joining me in, super awesome. And if this is the last video we ever watch, awesome. Um, it's all good. It's all good. You know, I just, I don't know. I'm just posting because I feel like I'm meant to make a huge help and difference. And, you know, he mentioned just about, you know, you telling the audience where you're at, because one thing it's like, okay, I'll talk about some stuff, but I'll keep some stuff private. And there's stuff, there's still things I'm going to keep private, you know, just there's this things like, you know, some, maybe somebody's name who is in my life, who maybe would prefer to be private. And maybe I'm having a conversation with someone and there's something that comes up that uh, should be a little bit more private. You know, I'll, I'll make my judgment there. Anything that kind of feels like I'm crossing the line of integrity, uh, you know, I won't say crossing the line of integrity. Well, I guess for other people, right? It's protecting other people. Because some people don't want their stuff aired out, which is fine. Totally fine. So, Lorenzo mentioned this guy named Dan Co. who who mentions like the future of business right he talked about so let me get this straight right people in business talk about n niching down like super hyper 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 niche right like boom so you know you're gonna learn something you're gonna you have to do a lot of research to learn about people uh who you don't know right which is fine uh but to sell them a pro like but to sell a product that you don't really care too too much about to people who you don't really know and really care about and scale a business that you really don't care about or really don't like whatever it is just to make some money and that really resonated with me like wow wow and lorenzo talked about documenting well, lorenzo was summer summarizing danco's video and mentioning showing where you're at and showing your journey to wherever it is that you end up and for my adult life you know I'm 27 now my adult life i i had a really crystal clear idea as far as what i wanted i wanted to travel the world and i wanted my own business i wanted to be a digital nomad that was what i wanted the most and i've been i was able i was able to do that and i actually have a lot of footage from from that time you know with my former business partner i have about 2.5 terabytes of a footage um in my google drive you know not all of that is from traveling with my former business partner i would say maybe about two terabytes of it is there's there's a lot there's definitely a tremendous amount in there however when i was documenting you know like 99 percent to 100 percent of people that i was documenting i told them like look i have no plans to post this at all like i don't plan on posting this specifically because i wanted people to act uh normal and i wanted people to relax uh, with the, with the camera around so if, if i ever do decide to post i would have to get a lot of i would have to get permission from a lot of different people which is okay uh at the same time right i don't really feel called to, to post that kind of stuff right now because i was in a different time of my life and 
Um, I value different things. And there's a lot of stuff in there that uh, it would be better off if we remain private for now. Uh, just because of just uh, the potential ripple effect that it could have um, that doesn't just affect me, right? It, it can affect the lives of so many other uh, people. So I like starting a fresh, starting a new because I did, I did that stuff. You know, I traveled and I found myself in rooms that were just, that would wow a lot of people, right? Like uh, like the, the Royal Ball in the Palace of Versailles, like the first Royal Ball to take place since the French Revolution in the Palace of, of Versailles uh, in, in France. Palace of Versailles or Palace of Versailles, whatever. I don't Clearly, I, I'm not I'm not one of the people who should have been there. <laughs> Palace of Versailles? Um, I'm blanking out on that. And, like, yeah, and, and I have video footage of that, you know, and it's like, Yeah, there's some cool stuff, but um, it just like some some of that stuff just never really resonated deep within my soul, deep within my heart. It's like this is cool. I'm gonna enjoy it. Like I'm kind of mind blown that I somehow made it in this room. Um, how everything kind of transpired, and you know, I'll tell I'll tell those stories as as I see fit as time goes on, just to. Cause some of them are, are wild like how we even got into that that, that event is, is a wild story and you know I'll, I'll happy to detail that as time goes on but the purpose of this video is is saying like I did I did what I wanted and it wasn't what I thought it was going to give me I thought it was gonna finally make me feel at peace with myself I thought it was gonna solve emotional issues with myself I thought it was going to solve the anxiety that I would feel all the time even though I connect with people that doesn't mean that I still felt a lot of anxiety inside when I spoke to them and you know I had and I had various degrees of anxiety depending on what this who I was talking to and, and what I was doing but there there's definitely I've been going through my life with a tremendous amount of anxiety I mean as I mentioned coming up from domestic violence and then not just that, but there would be events that would happen in my life because of the domestic violence that would just drastically change the course of my life forever. Um, and, not, and not just events in terms of just domestic violence, but there were other events that happened that just, boom, all of a sudden, hey, life is different. Nothing will ever be the same. Bam, done. It's, it's done. And it just happened just like that within the span of 24 hours. Like, uh, for example, like when I was, uh, when I was eight years old, I was uh, I was living in, in a city called Moreno Valley, right? I, I live in that city right now. It's a city that Kawhi Leonard uh, actually grew up in himself. If you don't know Kawhi Leonard, he's a NBA champion and uh, interesting interesting uh, personality. And when I was in eighth grade, I not eighth grade when I was eight years old. When I was in third grade, um, I wanted to go to the, to the book fair. There was a book fair that was happening in the evening. And I remember I was playing with my friend Jamal. He was a little black kid. He had corn rolls. And it was after school. And, you know, we were, like, excited about the book fair because the book fair was just fun. And then to go to school at night and, and you know, you get to see their parents. Like, it's a fun activity, right? And I remember, like, he, I don't know, he, like, like maybe slap my head or whatever it is whatever kids do and you know he was able to elude me and i'm like i'm gonna get you tonight and he's like tonight you gonna get me tonight because i must have said it that way i was like, oh I'm, I'm gonna get you man and when i got home you know i told my parents like yeah okay we'll take you and then they're like you know what i remember my dad's like you know what? i'm gonna decide not to take you and my little eight-year-old self stood up on the reclining couch that I was uh, sitting on. And I stood up and, and I, I slapped him across the face. And I don't remember what happened after that. My dad never hit his kids, right? He never hit us. Um, I don't remember what happened, but I do remember the slap. And I do remember the next day, my mom picked me up from school, which was, which was very surprising because my mom never picked me up from school. I don't say never. It was very rare she picked me up from school because... She was she was commuting to LA and LA was like a hour and ten hour and twenty minute drive a commute so 
my older sister usually took me to school. My older sister usually picked me up because my mom wasn't home yet from work. And my mom picked me up and I was confused. And she goes, hey, we're going over to your older sister's house. I said, oh, what? Okay. And she's like, yeah, I was uh, I was talking on the phone with your older sister about what happened last night. And your dad overheard and he was very upset. So we're going to your sister's and we're moving in with your grandma. What? 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 Excuse me, what? I was a kid, you're like, what? And we get to my older sister's house and she goes, her mom goes, I'm call the police and I'm gonna go get our stuff. I'm gonna go by myself. I'm like, what? Like, we, we gotta go. Like, I wanna go. Like, are you gonna be safe? Are you gonna be okay? Like, you're gonna call the police? Like, what? To get our stuff. And then, and she went on her own. She went to, and she called the police and, you know, made sure that she was protected and um, we get our stuff and then we're moving. But now we're living with my grandma. Whole life changed just like that. Just like that. And then I started going to school in East LA at a place called Rowan Avenue. And I remember when I walked in that class because in Moreno Valley, the, the, the class was very diversified. Uh, well, in Moreno Valley, it was very diversified. You know, you had Mexicans, you had uh, you had blacks, and then uh, you had some whites as well. Uh, however, when I got to East LA, everybody was Mexican. Now the thing is, I was eight years old. I don't know, oh, this person's black, this person's white, this person's Mexican. Like, I just grew up, like you don't think about people's race because you're on, you're on everybody. And uh, even my even my best friend growing up, uh, he was I think he was some kind of Asian. I mean, he, he was Asian. He I for, I was I was li looking at his last name. I was thinking about his last name. His last name was Bowie. I don't know if it's Chinese or Vietnamese, but uh, yeah. So you I was around everything, and I remember when I walked into my class in East LA and. I remember looking around the class and I remember thinking, dude, there's like three or four sets of twins in this class. Like everybody looks similar. And I didn't realize like I was only around Hispanics. I was the only black kid in this Hispanic class. And and then now I got to make friends. And then now I realize I'm different. And then I moved schools again when I was in fifth grade. And then, you know, that that time was more difficult to make friends. It was easy. It was easier to make friends in elementary at the at Rowan. Um, there was this girl, her name was Hazel, and her cousin Angel, you know, they really were uh, really nice to me right off the bat, right? Off, like on the first like recess break, you know, Hazel was just so, so nice, you know, and I felt very welcomed. So, uh, but yeah, still, I miss my friends. I miss my friends so, so, so much. And, and then they're just ripped from my life just like that. And then uh, when I was in fifth grade, like I was ripped from, from that school and all my friends and we were like, you know, excited to go to middle school together. Next thing you know, boom, we're going to a completely different school. And I wasn't as accepted at this school. I wasn't. And at that this school, the the I will I played I like basketball, so but the, the basketball crowd that I was around was just not uh the best. They were just not up to like the best they, they weren't the kids who had the best grades, they weren't the kids who were the most studious and yeah so anyway just i feel like there's a lot of this that played into having tremendous amount of anxiety through my life and um i still I, I felt like accomplishing my biggest goals and showing people like look what i did i feel like i would finally feel like worthy enough i would finally feel like comfortable in my own skin i'd finally feel at peace i finally feel like okay like i did the biggest thing i wanted to do like finally i feel like i can feel like i'm enough and the truth is, like I did it. I remember I was, I was at a entrepreneur event, and like ninety percent of the people there uh, were doing at the very least seven figures because it was, uh, you know, I was partnered with a company called Maverick One Thousand, and it's for you know seven plus figure entrepreneurs who care about growth, impact, and fun, and they had a event in Italy, and. I was there with my former business partner. Uh, we were in Tuscany, and I remember there was this. We just rode like ATVs through like the Tuscan hills, and uh, we were. When we got back to uh, when we, the ATV place, there was a long table set up for everybody who was there for for dinner, and there was like a dance floor. And I remember we ate dinner, and the like. It's now dark time, and uh, I. I there's like disco lights and people are dancing, the DJ and all this kind of stuff. And I remember 
right off next to the dance floor was like this uh was this wall right and i remember i, I sat on the wall and if I, I look down and there's like it's like a 30 feet drop right it's it's a very long drop and i just i just you know dangle i'm like halfway on one i'm like making sure i'm okay i'm like halfway on one side and half with my other foot's kind of dangling off the wall and i'm looking off into the darkness you know like you can't really you can't see anything but i'm looking off into the darkness because in about a couple days i was about to hit my one year anniversary of traveling right i was like damn like i i did the biggest thing i wanted i remember at one point like i shifted both legs looking off you know out into the distance and i was just thinking like what next dude like i did what i wanted to do like what what the heck dude like i still feel the same i was very confused like what what is a goal worth actually pursuing what is something worth pursuing i don't know i have no idea and i was like maybe it's impact right and i'm like well if i did exactly what i wanted to do maybe like i should okay if i did exactly what i wanted to do the next thing i should put my mind to should be something very very big right and instead of it being about me maybe i should make it more impact focused and I thought, okay, what if I set the intention to impact 5 billion people? I want to impact 5 billion people, right? It's like, that, that's a lot of people. But it's like, if I can do whatever it is that I want, I might as well make it something really big. And if doing something for me doesn't work, maybe doing something for other people would also, would maybe be better. So I was, I was, uh, I was jostling with this in, in my head. And I remember on the, on the bus ride back to our, uh, the place that we were staying at, I was talking to uh, the this this guy who was the husband of uh, this uh, woman who is a a big influencer in the health space, and we were talking, and he was like really pouring into me and my former business partner, and um, I forgot what I said. I feel like man, I feel like I have to. I feel like the picture that I painted isn't the picture that like. Like, I feel like, man, I feel like I have to start anew. I feel like I have to start completely fresh. Like, what? I don't know. And he said, some of the most famous paintings in the world were painted over other paintings. And I was like, whoa, like, oh, my God, that makes sense. That's crazy. So it's time to paint a new a new painting. And where I'm at right now is, like, I don't know what is it that I want, really. Like, I, I, I do know one thing. I do know that I want to be the most healthy that I can possibly be. I want to be physically strong, not just like with my muscles, but I want to be strong inside. I want my cells and my organs to be taken care of. I want I want to be really healthy inside. That's what I do know. But I don't I don't necessarily know what I want in terms of what I want my external life to look like. There's a lot of different things that I that I could do, right? There's like, oh, there's deal making, there's you know, creating a mastermind, there's there's so many different things that I, I can do, but nothing really calls to me right now. And the journey's unraveling as as I go. And now I feel there's a, there's a great book called Becoming Supernatural by uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza. And uh, I read this book when I was in Cambridge. Of uh, like I was in Cambridge, UK, November, October, November of 2021. And he said, to really be able to get what you want and attract what you want, you first must immerse yourself in the unknown of your life. Because if you're in a place that it's something that is known, that's because you've experienced before in the past. So basically, you're recreating your past into the future now. So you're, re you're recreating the known because you already know this. It's like, damn, I'm recreating the past into the future. Okay. And then he talks about uh, having intention in terms of what you want, plus elevated emotion to attract it, because this is a whole quantum field. I'm getting off, you know, that, that's a whole different conversation for something else. However, the first step is immersing yourself in the unknown, and I'm in the unknown. Things are unraveling as as they go. Just as I, just as if you've seen the previous videos, the first video I'm talking about, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but I feel like I'm supposed to turn on the camera. The second video, same thing, like. Uh, I'm terrified and at the same time I'm excited so and then just the videos that evolve it's like oh man I'm kind of finding my voice I'm trying to I'm figuring things out and where I'm at now is like okay well 
let me talk about some real shit then. Let me talk about where exactly where I'm at and let me talk about how I'm solving those challenges. And I wanna I wanna bring light to where I'm at because it's this it's an interesting position where I'm at and I would love to document the journey just as I have been in the previous year. You know, I've been documenting for a little bit over a year now. And when I got so when I got home from traveling, I got back home on August 22nd, uh, 2022 for my one year of travel. And when I got home, like something interesting happened that was not happening when I was in London, which was my body all of a sudden was like extremely exhausted. It was extremely, extremely exhausted. And I was in bed most of my days and my body was just getting rest. And it was frustrating because I was still in my business partnership with my business partner and it was still d difficult for me to execute and get things done and I wasn't feeling well. And then I start, and then I noticed when I would use the restroom, my legs would be tremoring, they'd be shaking, and I, and I'll be standing at the refrigerator to to get some water, and I couldn't stand, I couldn't stand up too long, right? Like before, my body would just be shaking all uncontrollably. I couldn't really plant myself, and then I started noticing my heart rate was really high, like really high. I'm like, dude, my heart just is racing. Like, what the hell's going on? And I remember. One night, I woke up out of my sleep, and uh, I was like, ooh, this is intense. My body, what's going on? I'm like, am I okay? And dude, like three in the morning, I had a little mild panic attack. I was like, holy shit, like I'm having a mild panic attack. I've never had a, I've never had a panic attack before. I'm using the restroom. I'm like, I got to wake up my mom. Like, we, like I got to, we got to do something. I don't know what to do. And I remember by the end of me using the restroom, like it was kind of starting to subside a little bit, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go talk to my mom anyway. And I go to her room and I'm like next to her bed. And I'm like, mom, mom. And she's not waking up. And now, now my mom, she's she's a very hardworking woman. I mean, she works still, she still works in LA. She has to commute like an hour and some change driving five days a week and sometimes she even does it six days a week and she gets home around 10 p.m and she wakes up at 3 30 a.m to go to work and it's crazy man and you know she she needs her rest and i was like oh man you know what i feel i feel okay i feel like i can manage this um let me let me make sure just my mom gets her rest um i think i'll be okay so i went back to bed and then I was just going through some shit. Now the thing is, right in in America, when you are when you turn twenty six, I think it's twenty six. You are no longer like you you can be under your your parents' health care insurance, right? So I've had health care my whole life. It, I never even thought twice about it, right? It's like I got health care, no problem. And because you're young, you know, you feel like you're indestructible. You feel like you're invincible. For me, I didn't really have many problems with my health. So it's not a big deal. It's like one of those one of those things like, oh, whatever. But then being 26, I didn't have health care. And I'm like, oh, shit, I don't have health care. And like, what am I going to do? So I'm like in the process of trying to figure out how to uh, get health care. I didn't have any money. And like, you know, I'm going to have to have my, my parents pay for health care. And then I remember I was like, okay, they're going to pay for it. It's like $360 a month for, for this health care. And... Boom. Okay, so we get we get the ball in motion. I, this is either. I think this is October. It's October twenty twenty two, and at this point, my heart rate is going, you know, fast and all this kind of stuff. And um, I don't know what's going on. And like you know, I pay for health insurance around mid October, with my parents' help, and the health insurance didn't activate until like November first. So then November 1st, and then I have to set an appointment, and it's two weeks out, and I'm, like, doing all this blood work. And then, long story short, I end up getting diagnosed with what's called hyperthyroidism. And basically what that is is your thyroid is a stress gland in your in your body, right? And it's responsible for regulating your stress. Now, that one year of travel, we were in survival mode. It's not like we were thriving and we're making all this money. We made some money along the way, but by, by no means were we – like, oh, okay, we're fine. Like, we're, we're fucking killing it. No, dude, it was, 
it was a, a fight to survive for for the most part for the most part it was and i've never been in survival mode before i never had to worry about where am i going to eat where am i uh going to stay and, and, and all that kind of stuff and being in survival mode that whole time put my body into overdrive and now now my body had to do like just do all this resting and rest and rest and rest and rest and rest and it was it was tough to come to terms with this because i've always in my adult life at least i was always able to push through and even even before my adult life you know when i wanted to play on the basketball team i remember going from middle school to high school that summer in between i would wake up at you know seven in the morning and i'll get my basketball and i would go to the park every day practice because i wanted i wanted to make the basketball team for high school and I've always been I've always been driven, you know. I've always been a person to march to the beat of my own drum, and um, it come November, you know, it just like it just made sense to, hey, you know what? It's it's time to actually uh, split up at, as business partners and split up as uh, a, a par- my partnership with the company Maverick. So. Um, I decided to decide it, it was best for uh, me to go because also we were starting to hit a lot of a lot of challenge. Um, yes, uh, my business partner and I. Um, I the reason why I say business partner because I I don't know how comfortable she is with me uh, using her name uh, specifically because just, there's just she has her own reason. You know, she's she's more private than I am. That's that's the best way to put it. And. Um, Yeah, it was like, hey, you know what? We were we were starting to have a lot of challenge between us and our relationship because of business challenges. And I was like, at the same time, like, dude, we were having so much strife within our business, like within our relationship with the business at the same time. Like, yo, like, I don't want to resent you. Like, I want us to be on good terms. Like, I love you tremendously. Like, you're like, we went through this amazing journey. I'd hate for us to to end on such a ugly note. So you know, we made the decision to consciously uncouple, and uh, that was a that was difficult within itself. And and anyway, you know, as I mentioned, she was more private, and that's you know, it's partially why I don't want to post a lot of what I got before, and I wanted to shed light to where I am now, right? Because um, for a while, I didn't have really any income coming in, and even still, right, like. I'm taking care of my health. I've been talking to my network and they're just, you know, I've been getting nothing but love. Like, hey, I'm so happy for you that you're taking care of your health. You're watching over your health. And a lot of entrepreneurs I'm talking to are like, look, man, like that's something that I struggle with as well is looking after my own health and putting myself first. And she, they're like, and I've been getting nothing but love about it. Nothing but love. Uh, with that, you know, I'm, I'm behind on stuff. You know, I, I owe accountants several thousand dollars in, in money. I, you know, I'm, I, I owe my former business partner a couple thousand dollars. There's uh, some people that I borrowed money from who are my entrepreneur friends that help me out with, with different things. And uh, and I'm overdrawn uh, several hundred dollars in my checking account. And and it's just like, dude, like my health is just like it. It's working on its own terms. My health is on its own terms right now. It's like, look, man, like we got to take this time and. You know, you're 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 rebuilding your life. I'm, I'm just like that's where I'm at. I'm, I'm rebuilding my life completely from scratch. I don't really know where this boat is going. What I do know is, I do make uh, I do plan to go back to door to door sales in about forty five days. And I'm excited about that because door to door sales is lucrative, but it's just, it is just this, this journey that you I. I it, it's just I feel like I've been called like this is where exactly where I, I must be at, the, at this stage in my life in terms of doing door to door sales, just the spiritual advancement that I feel like I'm, I'm gaining from it and uh, who I who I'm becoming because um, it's just such a it's such a discomfort boot camp. And if I know one thing to be true is that I, I become I'm just so much more of a better version of myself. I'm just so much like I feel like I've evolved so much because of that one year of travel. Like that was one year of discomfort. That was and one year of figuring it out. And 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 
I am just, I'm someone different because of it. And I am just so much more in love with who I am. I love who I am so much more. And I have so much, there's so many lessons and I have just so much more perspective. And so I'm excited about that. And in the meantime, it's like, dude, I got, got a, the account has got to hold off. It's, it's tough, man. It's tough. It's, it's nowhere, it's nowhere near rainbows and sunshine, right? The, the, but I will say at the same time, externally, I do have these things going on, right? I don't have any income. I don't, I'm not working right now. I'm just taking care of my body. I'm taking care of my health. I'm doing yoga every single day. Like today's day 31, I believe of doing yoga every day. Um, I've been working out very intensely three to five times a week with my little sister and I'm building my body. And uh, at the same time, yeah, I have these external pressures, but I don't, it's not getting to me. I feel, I feel more at peace than I ever had before in my life. I feel calm. I feel okay. Yeah, there's, there's that, you know, I, I am aware that I, there's things I must get addressed. There are things that must get handled, but it's like, Hey man, like I got my health. It has a different timeline. And one thing that I have been practicing a lot more is the the state of acceptance hey this is where i'm at and that's okay i could i could cause stress upon myself to put to say i gotta do this i gotta get to this place i gotta make this happen but it's just like man life life has its own process for me and you know what i gotta deal with the consequence I, I, I'm the one that made the decision to, to get on that airplane with the one-way ticket to London with 2K in my bank account and to figure out that whole time and to put, I put myself in this position. I have to deal with the consequences. Okay. If it takes me a year or a couple years to recover from this, it's all right, man. You know, when I'm 40, 50 years old, I, I, I believe that I won't be as affected by what like the difficult position that I am at right now. I'm going to get it resolved. I'm going to get it resolved, but it's going to be on its own time. It's going to be on its own time. And and the, just the acceptance of that has bring, brought me peace. And with peace comes more healing, right? Because I also had to grieve the uncoupling with my business partner. I mean, we were business partners for damn near three years, and she was my best friend. And not just that, but think about it. We, we elevated each other's lives. I would not be where I'm at without her. She would not be where she's at without me. I was telling, I was talking to Lorenzo last night, and I was like, it feels like we were both stepping stones for each other at the right time to help us get to where we need to be. And that, and that relationship is unique, you know? I talk to her probably once a week. It's not like we're like, having conversations you know but we, we message each other and it's it's all love on, on both on both sides and you know we we both there's a there's a subtle understanding of um the the relationship that we once had and the relationship no there's an understanding of the relationship that we currently have and there's an understanding of like the uniqueness of of our relationship uh, because of what we've done together and there's just uh there's something that you 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 can't put into words really it's a feeling. It's a. It's an understanding. It's a. It's like a, you gone through so much with someone, and then you you know you you put your foreheads together and you look into each other's eyes and you're like, dude, we did some shit, dude. Like, and it was us. It was us in those trenches. Like, nobody was nobody else. Like went through that journey and process together that way that we did, and it's unique because we, we neither of us has ever done anything like that before. So. It's cool, man. I'm 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 very grateful. Very grateful. I hear I hear birds chirping. So beautiful, man. The sunlight. You can know you can if you tune in and just listen. I don't know if the video's picking up, but you know, you hear the it's like an ambulance in the background, you hear birds chirping. But even if I don't speak, just just really breathe with me. Just indulge in some silence really quick.
peace. And I feel like this peace has helped me out with uh, the grieving process, right? And I feel so much better. And peace has helped me out with being able to really listen to what is speaking to me inside, really tuning into my own intuition, me really listening to what is actually the best next steps for myself, but not really forcing myself to, I need to figure this out. I gotta figure this out. No, it's like, you know what? Where I'm at right now, I'm letting answers come to me. Right? I'm letting the process unfold as it as it is, and it's it's beautiful, man. It's very beautiful. And you know, one thing that my mentor Joe Pollard said to me on on uh, a call that we had, he he, I was still doing my business. You know, I was still like, you know, in the process. Like I, this is before I decided to take a break from. This is after. Me and my business partner had split up, but I was still like, okay, maybe I can still do some business stuff. And he he said, look, man, I can make an introduction for you right now that will potentially shave 10 years off of your life. He's very well connected. And he said, but the thing is, like, number one, you don't want to handicap someone by making things too easy for them. And he said, I also don't want to make an introduction too prematurely. Uh between you and, and anybody else. So um, I'm, I'm so grateful that he did that. I'm just, I'm so grateful because he he mentioned, um, you don't want to shortcut the process. You know, the, he said there's valuable lessons with, that are within the process. And, you know, one, one thing I, I walked, I walked away with several gems from that call, but one thing I walked away from is, is aligning myself with the process. And, you know, I've been off of social media for, for two months now. And before I left, I decided to change my bio on Instagram. And I changed my bio to married to the process. And I was doing yoga last week. And, and I was doing a yoga with Adrian video. And she said, um, when it comes to yoga, tune into the process and, and not the checklist. Right? It's not about, oh, I did I checked off the yoga today. It's like, hey, you know what? It's... The process of the yoga journey that just that you just contributed to it's like whoa align myself with the process don't align myself with a checklist whoa and what I love about the YouTube channel that I'm creating is it's very process oriented right I don't know where we're going all I know is like I got to take care of my health what I know is things are unfolding I'm getting different answers every day and I'm learning and you know I'm, I'm making decisions and it, it's awesome so to be able to go on this journey together is is fun and you know it's the engagement of life right it's it's not about trying to get somewhere and that's that's where i was between 19 and, and to 27 was i was trying to get somewhere right the travel the the women the the instagram pictures the the social media the how i'm going to look the the ego the pride the I will feel happy when um, this this whole thing and 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 not really enjoying the moment, not really enjoying the process, just being like this is where I'm going, that's it, you know. And with this, it's like man, I get to I get to enjoy the beauty of life. I get to let it unfold how it's uh, just how it's meant to unfold. I'm aligning. I am aligning myself with the process of life and. We'll see what that journey looks like for me. And it's cool because I'm not looking to Grant Cardone. I'm not looking to Tony Robbins. I'm not looking to Gary Vee. I'm not looking to Derek Moneyberg. I'm not looking to these people to tell me how I should live my life. I'm aligning myself with how I should live my life. And and those people, they did the same thing for themselves. They tune into what they feel is right for themselves. You know, we like them because they are them. And I am me. And... They came to their own realizations from the the parents that they had and the upbringing that they had and the friends that they had and the teachers they had and the area that they were at and when they were born and you know the time that they were born in and they, they've taken all these experiences and and cultivated them and made sense of the world to unfold in the way that's best for them so i'm doing the same for myself and i really really enjoy that so just like that huh 40 minutes almost amazing so 
hey, let, let's go on this journey together. If what I if I mentioned here resonates with you, if, if what I've said here really uh, feels strong within your body and, uh, and I'm communicating in a way that really speaks to your heart, let's go on this journey together. Hey, hit that subscribe button. If you're, hey, you know what? This video was way longer than it should have been. This video needed more structure or whatever it is. Like, hey, you know what? Maybe we're not meant to be in each other's lives right now. Maybe we're not meant to be in each other's lives ever. And that's, and that's okay too, you know, I, I just know I'm meant to make an impact, however I'm meant to make that impact, I don't know, as I mentioned, it's, the journey is unfolding as, as it is, but um, I want to I wanna document just myself climbing out of, uh, re, just rebuilding my life, and whatever that rebuild looks like, uh, to be able to go on that journey together, so I appreciate you tremendously, thank you for uh, tuning in to me. Take some time to tune into yourself. Let's actually take some time just really briefly. Let's take three deep breaths together, okay? If you're driving and listening to this, uh, just do it with your eyes open. If you're not driving, um, let's just do this right now. Or 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 Tony Robbins back in his uh, personal power two tapes. He's like, if you're driving, pull over. <laughs> he would he would tell people to pull over. I love that. So let's take some, let's just take three deep breaths together and let's let's tune in and. Uh, let's just end this uh let's end this uh, video together with some peace so amazing i hope you feel a little bit better i definitely feel a little bit more a little bit more centered i want to remind you that you have that power within you whenever you want all right talk soon peace